Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at actually animating particles, making them move around the screen. And uh, a lot of the principles that we're going to look at here will, um, in this tutorial and the next few tutorials, would also apply to animating everything. So in SDL, um, at the moment, we're, we're doing pixel access. We're putting a load of particles on the screen. Uh, which are just individual pixels, but SDL also allows you to put images on the screen, which we won't look at in, in this tutorial, but you can animate images uh, in the same way that you can animate particles. So at the moment, what's, what's happening in our uh, main program here is we've got our game loop. Uh, so even though at the moment that the particles are not changing position, although they are changing color, we're redrawing them as often as possible and uh, usually for um, a game or a simulation like this, you hope that uh, your game loop will execute at least sort of 25 times a second. I, I would guess here we're getting more than that. I don't know how many, 30 or 40 um, uh, redraws a second probably on, on my computer here. And uh, I think I'm, I'm building a debug target as well, which will always run more slowly than the release target. Actually, since we're not going to do any debugging, I can probably go to project and um, build configurations, set active and go to release, because that will compile a version without debug symbols in. And I haven't shown you how to use the debugger and we're probably not going to get onto that in this tutorial on basic C++. So we'll build a release one because without the debug symbols in it, which we're not using anyway, it will typically execute quite a lot faster. So um, now, just, just to get us started with animation, let's see if we can make the particles bounce around the screen sort of randomly, uh, which is not the final effect that we want to achieve, but it would certainly um, be a bit more interesting than having them just sit there. So since, since we're redrawing the screen, at least probably 30 times a second, all we have to do is um, move the particles in, in between redraws. Well, actually, we'll need to clear the screen and then move the particles every time we, um, every time we redraw the screen, and that will give the illusion of movement. So let's go to particle, uh, let's go to particle.h here, actually, because I want to give particle a method, which I'll call update. Let's make it, initially, let's make it void update, like that. And this is going to update the position of the particle and ultimately probably the color as well, but we'll leave that for the moment. And then we'll go to particle.cpp and create that method here. So we've got void particle colon colon um, update. So in here, we can change the positions of the particles. Um, let's just check what this error is here. Did I put that in the wrong place or something? Uh, so we've got void update in particle.h and I'm editing the right particle.h and it's for some reason complaining that's not right. Let's try just building it. Maybe I've got the wrong particle.cpp. Yeah, for some reason I've, I put that in the wrong particle.cpp. Let's cut that from there, save everything, quit that and try putting it in the right file. I should really close these projects as I go along so it does get confusing. Okay, that's better. So um, what we can do in here is uh, let's, let's, um, let's create a constant here. Let's say constant uh, double speed. Um, yeah, let's, let's just have a speed and set it equal to some, um, some like quite small value, like 0.0. 01. And every time we call update, which I need to call somewhere, I'm going to add speed to the x and y coordinates. Let's say m underscore x plus equals speed and m underscore y plus equals speed. Now this isn't very good because they're all going to move in, um, in the same direction. But let's see what, what effect this actually has. Let's go to um, let's go to our main file here, and before we draw the particles, let's call update on each of them. 
so um, maybe I should do that in, yeah what I can do is I, I could call update on each particle at this point after this but in fact what I'll do is I'll go to swarm.h and I'll also give swarm a void update method I won't make it virtual because I'm not planning to override it and go to swarm.cpp let's have a void swarm colon colon update and in there I can loop through all of the particles with a loop like this so it would be more efficient I suppose to update each of the particles positions in this loop but because um, I at least this computer doesn't particularly struggle with this I'm gonna um, go the route of more elegant coding rather than greater efficiency and create a separate loop to do this. So I've copied that loop where we loop through all the particles in the main uh, sort of thing and here I can say for each particle m, on, m underscore p particles and the array brackets here i dot update so I'm calling update on each particle um, it's complaining about that for some reason I'm not sure why method update could not be resolved but I have added it particle oh dear I think I'm editing the wrong swarm.cpp as well this is really a disaster let's cut this out of here put it in the right place and um, save that and let's check my swarm.h yes I also edited the wrong one there let's save that go back to swarm.h and um, put that in. If I do this again, I think I'm going to re-record re the video, but sometimes I like to leave these mistakes in just so that you can see um, what kind of thing typically goes wrong, at least with me, because I'm sure you'll make many of the same mistakes. But let's close that project now. Okay, so we've got swarm.cpp here. The error's gone away now. We're updating each particle. And now in main.cpp, um, when I do each of these loops, I can call, I'm going to put it down here for reasons that I'll show you in a bit. Let's call swarm.update to update the positions of all of the particles. So we've got our update code in our particle.update here. And let's, let's see what happens now when we run this. So let's check it out. So now all the particles have shot off in the same direction. We're not getting any errors because we've made sure that we're not drawing pixels uh, if they go out off the edge of the screen. Uh, otherwise, this would crash our program, but we, we've taken care of that already. And we, we, you can see it's, it's leaving these trails because we're not clearing the screen in between drawing these particles. So let's, let's think about clearing the screen. Um, if we go to screen.cpp, we've got a... Um, We've got an update method here, and that's that's clearing the renderer, but it's not clearing the particle buffer where we're drawing the particles. So if you remember, um, when, we, when we draw our particles, um, we're actually using screen.setPixel. And if we look at that, that's drawing into this buffer, which we're not clearing. So the thing to do is, um, that we need to clear this buffer somewhere. So if we look at main, first we're doing set pixel and then we're doing screen.update. Probably the, the right thing to do here is to create a screen.clear method. Let's try that and see if, see if that works. I think that might do the trick um, because there's, there's nothing else here that um, we can really clear, I don't think. So let's try that. Let's go to um, let's go to screen dot h and add here a void clear method. And I'll go to screen dot cpp and implement that. Doesn't matter too much where we put it. So screen clear. And in there, I'm going to do memset. I'm going to memset the buffer that holds the particles. Uh, so we're going to memset each byte in there to naught. 
s to sort of clear it. And um, the number of bytes is going to be the number of bytes of the buffer, which, in fact, actually, we've already got exactly what we want here. So we, we did clear it when we initialized it. Um, so it's the screen width times the screen height because it, it holds um, holds actually four bytes for each pixel in the screen times size of uint32, which is four bytes. Let's just, let's just copy this line, in fact, because it's going to be a bit quicker. Paste that in there. And then, if we go to main.cpp, before we draw the particles here, we can um, clear the screen. So we can say um, screen.clear somewhere up here. Now let's see what that does. So let's run this. And now we can see that we've cleared the screen and we've just got a massive load of particles that just all shuffle off to the lower, um, the lower right there. So the reason they're doing that is because if we go to particle.cpp now, we can see that we're, we've got this speed and we're just adding that value to the X and Y. So if you increase X, it will move the particle to the left. Let's just demonstrate that, for example. We run this and we see the particles moving, sorry, to the right. Um, and if we increase Y, it actually moves them down because Y increases uh, from the top down to the bottom of the screen, which is how the screen is actually redrawn. Hopefully you can see that on your um, on this video. And if we do them both at the same time, then um, the effect is to move them diagonally down to the to the right and to the bottom. Well, that, that's not very good. What, what we'd really like is um, we'd like them sort of moving uh, randomly around a bit. So what we could do is um, we could have a, let's say, const double x speed. And we need to set this to some random value. Let's use rand divided by rand max to get a random number between 0 and 1. And this, um, remember, rand max is rand returns a random number from 0 up to rand max. And rand max is some big... Uh, some big constant here. It's this, in fact, 0x7 and a bunch of f's in hexadecimal. And remember that these are two integers, so this would this would give us something not useful at all. That would give us naught, probably, I suppose, usually. Um, but if we multiply this by a double, if we multiply run by a double, then we'll we'll get some. We'll do double division instead of integer division, and we'll get some useful result. So let's, let's try this. And we can do the same to create a Y speed as well. So again, we'll, we'll get another random number from there, multiply it by a double. Um, I meant to put these brackets just around the top bit here because we want to make sure that we're dividing a double by an, in, an integer because um, as long as we do this bit of the calculation first, we've got a double and then when we divide by this integer, we will still do double division. As long as either the numerator or the denominator are a double, you get floating point division, which is what we want. So now we can add x speed to x and y speed to y. And let's see how that looks. So um, we're still getting them. In fact, they um, are they even moving at different speeds? I'm not completely sure they should be, but they're still shuffling off to the bottom right, which is not really that interesting. Um, so we should be getting different speeds here though. What we can do is, what we really want is, yeah, you can see they're jiggling about as they move, but on, av on average, they end up moving with a sort of similar sort of average speed. Uh, to make them move in different directions, we want to make sure that x speed and y speed can be negative as well as positive. So, ran, ran divided by ran max, that's giving us a random number between um, between naught and one. What we really want is a random number between minus one and plus one. So, to do that, we we can increase the range of this by multiplying it by two. That's a random number from um, 
from naught to two and then subtract one from it so subtract one so we, we want to get this in the right order let's just cut this down a bit so we want to multiply two by ran 2.0 that's very important to turn this into a double divide it by ran max so that will give us a random number from naught to two and then subtract one which will give us a random number from minus one to plus one and that's what we want and once we've got that, let's put more brackets around this, we can multiply it by some speed constant that can determine for us um, basically roughly how kind of fast that we want them to move. So let's paste this in for y as well. And we've got some sort of warning here. This is just this bad character sequence which plagues me, but I can see that there's a space underlined, so there's obviously some weird non-printing character instead of a space so I've just deleted that and put a space in. Uh, now let's let's run this again. So now what we're seeing them jiggling around in um, in quite random ways. Now um, they're behaving like flies. The kind of the, the average speed of them is zero because um, we recalculate the average speed every time we draw the particle. What would make it more interesting is if we gave the particle its speed, its direction, um, when we initialize the particle, and if that particu each particular particle then stuck to having the same speed and direction for its entire life. So what we can do is um, take these out here, let's cut them from there, let's go to particle.h and paste them in here. Let's call them m, m underscore x speed, m underscore y speed. I can't initialize these here, so I'm going to get rid of the const here. I'm going to copy this into the constructor of the particle. So get rid of the declaration from the constructor, like that. And um, get rid of the assignment from the header. So get rid of this bit, which we can't put. Uh, where we declare the variable. So I've declared the variables as, um, well, the public variables, but it doesn't doesn't matter for the moment, in part, in the particle class. And in the implementation in the constructor, then I assign the speeds to random speeds. And then we can simply use them in this update method here. So now if I run this, we see something much more interesting. Particles are buzzing around and they're gradually all going to move off the edge of the screen and get lost. Now this isn't the final movement algorithm that I want to show you because um, it's, a, it's a kind of a bit boring for our purposes here, but I wanted to show you some of the basic principles of animation. One last thing that I want to show you is we can make sure in this update method that the particles don't move off the edge. So let's say here um, if m underscore x is less than naught or if m underscore x is greater than screen width really we should say is greater than or equal to screen width then we'll make the x speed equal to the negative of itself so that we reverse the direction in the x direction of the particle. So um, if the, uh, oh sorry, that, that should actually be one, because we've said that the particle is bouncing around in a box that goes from, and this should be minus one, come to think of it. Yeah, so uh, we, we, we're making the particle bounce around in a box from minus one to plus one. So if it exceeds those bounds, then, um, then we're going to change the, the speed, we're going to reverse the speed, so we reverse the, di the x direction by taking the negative of itself. And we don't have to worry too much about whether it could go off the edge of the screen because you know, if the particle is already off the edge and we change the speed, then it's, it's still off the edge because the speed will only affect it next time update is called. But we don't have to worry too much about that because we've made sure that um, pixels can't be set off the edge of the screen, which could cause the program to crash, so we don't have to worry. Let's do the same thing for Y as well. 
So if y is outside of this box of minus 1 to plus 1, then we can change the y speed to the negative of whatever it is currently. So if it's positive, we make it negative. If it's negative, we make it positive. And if we run this now, we can see that um, now the particles stay within the screen and they're all just bouncing around randomly. Might be nicer if there was less of them and they were a bit slower, actually. Let's go to where we initialize the speed here and make it slower. And I'm also going to go to uh, swarm.h and change the number of particles to 1,000. So now we'll run this. So as, as I say, this isn't the final algorithm that we're going to use, but um, it shows you the basic principles of animation. And you can use this kind of thing for making a ball bounce around the screen, for example. Uh, so I'll leave it there for now. And we've got some more things to do, including blurring the screen and making the particles move in a much more interesting way. So we'll, we'll tackle one of those in the next tutorial. That's it for this tutorial, and until next time, happy coding.